AVC, it's me again. It's uh, Wednesday, and I uh, wasn't sure if I was going to do a video today, but after work I was hanging around watching your old girls' videos, and, uh, catch up on comments and stuff, and you know, just, this place makes me happy. I feel like you people understand, you know. Never met any of you, don't know if I ever will. Feeling. So today's Wednesday, which means yesterday was Tuesday, which is of course the release day at the record store. Uh, I was able to swing by after work. And I knew there was nothing, you know, again that I had to have. It's kind of a slow period from the releases to pick up again around Labor Day and taper off again after Thanksgiving. You all know. Um, but uh, gotta give a shout out to Blake. Thank you so much for your nice comments and uh, for uh, reminding me that, yeah, of course I can have two copies of something. Because I can put it in my uh, VCLT stash. And I'm a little new around here, so I'm not quite sure how that how that works. But um, So, uh, went back to Grimey's, and uh, this is still sitting there. It's quite flame. i got to give you a shout out for this. The uh, Montebus Communitas, the new record. Everybody's great is it's Koi Flintess. So uh, I went ahead and got it. When I get my copy from uh, Trouble in Mind, uh, set that aside uh, for some VCLT. And uh, that concept is so cool because uh, you know I've got I got a lot of records that I thought about selling, but I don't want to keep. Well, Glad to hear there's some interesting classical records because um, I got a lot of classical records I could, um, that I can share. Um, and then this thing, uh, Sun Sun O, oh, I'm not even sure how to pronounce their name. This is a reissue of their second record on Southern Lord. Uh, this has been sitting there for a long time, and I think it's out of print. It was someone had ripped the plastic bag that. Southern Lord packages things in. So it was open but unplayed and slightly marked down and it had been sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. Um, I decided to go ahead and pick it up. You know, I have to be in the right mood, mood for this kind of stuff. This sort of doomy drone kind of stuff. But Southern Lord knows how to, how to make a record. Beautiful textured, heavyweight, stoven cover. You know, great inner sleeves, 180 gram vinyl, 45 RPM, I love that. Um, my only criticism of Southern Lord is that sometimes the pressings are kind of noisy. I'm not sure where they press their stuff. You know, other than that, um, I have a few Sun records on Southern Lord. You know, I'm happy to put that uh, so I wanted to show some other records uh, that I've been into this summer, kind of catching up, the vinyl update, uh, the new releases, new new vinyl. Like I said in my introductory video, this is a great time to be in vinyl because you know so much stuff is coming out on vinyl. Um, it usually sounds better, and it's almost always the packaging is better. So. You know, I it's fun. So I wanted to show you some uh, some new records I bought over the summer that y'all might be interested. In. Uh, first thing is is this Slobber Pop Black Aces. It's kind of a rare noise label. It's what we're listening to. I don't know if you can if you can hear it. Uh, I pre-ordered this from Rare Noise in Italy. Because uh, I was just so excited about the idea of Joe Morris. I don't know if you jazz guys know Joe Morris. Uh, he's made a zillion records. And this is him in like a free avant metal, I'd say. I mean, it's with uh, Jamie Saft on keyboards. He's got a lot of work with John Zorn. Uh, Trevor Dunn on bass. Uh, uh, this trio convulsing with Ray Halverson. He's pretty rocking. 
and then this drummer I'd never heard of, Balaz Pandi. Uh, I think he's kind of a metal drummer, but um, you know, he's, this is all free improv stuff, but it's, man, it's just kicking. And it's a uh, beautiful gatefold with a uh, really cool rock and roll you know, cover. Nice inner sleeves. Uh, we're actually listening to the 24 bit 48 kilohertz gold master edition we downloaded before this actually came out. And, uh, you know, this sounds great. It really does. Uh, it's right on over two LPs. Uh, but I like high resolution digital. It's a different kind of sound. Uh, so anyway, um, I've been, you know, into metal the past couple of years. It's kind of a long story how that all happened in my history of metal. And I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to show some metal or some post-metal you know, stuff that I've been digging this summer. Uh, first thing is this uh, Baroness. It's got a new EP out. Live at the BBC. Uh, this thing is really cool. Um, you know, a lot of people criticized them for their last record last year, Yellow and Green. Use them maybe going soft, going for commercial appeal. Uh, and yeah, I could see where longtime fans might say this, but uh, if they were going for something commercial, they threaded that needle pretty well. And I've come to really, you know, admire Baroness. You can see my Baroness t-shirt. Uh, but any, anyway, this thing's pretty cool. Um, John Dyer Baisley did the artwork, as he usually does. And uh, these were recorded on um, the BBC uh, on Ju July 13th, 2012. Um, it was shortly before their tour bus went off a bridge and nearly killed them. Bass player and drummer play on this said no no more so come back Baroness is actually kind of a, a miracle uh, so John Dyer Baisley and uh, oh shit I can't remember his name the lead guitar player just, you know recovered from pretty massive injuries you know relearned how to play the guitar and um, they're back on the road and uh, this is kind of like a stopgap kind of thing so what you have is uh, four tracks recorded with BBC four tracks from yellow and green and then on the other side and this is just I'm sorry this is cool you have an etching and uh, this is on relapse of course and uh, vinyl only I think comes with the download of those four tracks Different colors and stuff. I went for the gold color. Uh, and, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, been into the relapse label lately. They've been doing some interesting things. They, you know, they put out a lot of stuff, and some of it's kind of you know, juvenile, in my opinion. You know, it's kind of a problem with metal. So, you know, there's Opeth, and then there's Just kidding. Um, and thank God for YouTube, you know, where you can almost always find, you know, streaming stuff. And, uh, you know, sites like Pitchfork that stream albums. And, uh, you know, you get to hear before you buy, because God knows you're going to hear on radio. Uh, so these guys, you know, I was reading good things about, and, you know, you got to love this cover. ASG. Uh, the album's called Blood Drop. I think ASG originally stood for All Systems Go, but I think they got sued or something. It's got kind of a John Dyer Baisley look. Sort of cool cover. Cool cover. Uh, it spins at 45, which is cool. This is just a plain black vinyl edition. Uh, but this is, um, this is not really metal. I mean, there are metallic touches here and there. But it's more of just like a hard rock record. And 
you know, it would be kind of dull if it weren't for the singer, Jason, Jason She, I think his name is. Um, he's got a, he's got a um, nice voice, um, ranging from like a low baritone on the ballads to like shriekingly high black metal kind of stuff, occasionally. And then, you know, a, a rock, rock tenor, you know. Um, and the songs are pretty good, um, but it's his voice that really carries the stuff. Anyway, that's a pretty cool record. It's not getting a lot of attention. Um, uh, and this is an interesting record. Not not the usual fare for relapse. You know, it's heavy and all that kind of stuff. But it's coming out of a uh, sort of indie rock. Uh, this is... Uh, Blanket on their name. Uh, True Widow. Sorry. True Widow. And the album's called uh, Circumambulation. And yeah, first of all, that cover is not real metal. It, it kind of has this more of like a Joy Division. Joy Division meets some sort of industrial kind of thing. And again, this would normally not excite me very much. Nice flat or vinyl, though. Uh, it has that um, kind of sound of like they just learned how to play their instruments, you know. And I don't mean that as put down. That's a, there's a certain charm to that. And so the structures are simple, if not to say simplistic, but um, they create a mood. And the, the nice thing about this is the um, Alternating male, female singer. Kind of, kind of a dreary record, um, but uh, but not meth. I don't know. It, it's interesting. Uh, another record that um, is kind of outside relapses, normal kind of thing is the Science Band from Chicago. I think Locrian. Return to Annihilation. Yeah, again, beautiful gate pole cover. Crested 45. Uh, beautiful sort of lime green vinyl. That's beautiful. Kind of unusual color. Uh, this, you know, I didn't quite know what to make of this um, at first. It's got a uh, occasional like sort of black metal screaming, you know, but it's mostly instrumental and synthesizers and power electronics and sort of industrial in parts, and kind of post rock and um, really, it's really interesting ride, you know. Um, I don't love the title "Return to Annihilation." The titles of the songs are, you know, kind of looks. Slightly, I don't know, but you put it on and sort of shut off your mind and go with it. It's um, um, I really like it a lot. Love it. Uh, and uh, they put out some more typical stuff for the label. That um, I guess I could kind of collect the label. Not everything, but um. This is a cool EP from Black Tusk. Uh, this is not colored vinyl. Um, it's been 45. It's kind of the same old thing. There's a track on here with some strings, string section. That's kind of interesting. Uh, and uh, this is another new signing. Um, you know, I would have avoided this actually just for the cover and the name and the song titles and all that stuff. Uh, but again, I streamed this. Um, somewhere and uh, even with the crappy streaming sound quality uh, I can tell this band has something going on and uh, look at that cover Lord Dine Summon the Faithful and look at those song titles yeah kind of juvenile but um, 
it got kind of a sort of proggy, almost kind of like Mastodon thing, like under the surface, like they're a Portland band, and I think they're, they're just new on the scene. Sexy poly vinyl. That alone makes it fun. This crazy label. Um, so some, you know, solid riffs and, um, you know, I don't know. It's stupid, but I like it. Uh, another record, this Sunbather by uh, Death Heaven. It's gotten a lot of hype. And uh, I guess I kind of succumbed to the hype, too. Again, I, I streamed it before I bought it, but... And black metal is not, it's a little hard for me to take. I gotta say, part of the appeal is, is this cover, which is a very not black metal cover. And uh, I don't know if you can see here, uh, this is a, uh, it's a die cut under there. Um, a die cut on the back. And uh, press 45. This is red vinyl. Second disc is we call it beer color. Now this record, you know, like I said, you know, I like a lot of metal, but um, this is really powerful. This is. Um, you know, there's there's some shrieking, you know, uh, but it's it's gut wrenching. It's not like an effect so much. It's just like wow, and it's buried in the mix, so it's not like in your face. And it's all these layered guitars. There's elements of like my bloody Valentine in terms of layers and layers of electric guitars and melodies. You know, the singer's screaming his head off, but the melodies are happening in all these guitars. You know, beautiful melodies, and. Um, long, long songs, 15, 20 minute long songs that will go into all these different parts and be really intense, you know, intense, fast driving metal and then it'll open up into this um, almost ambient or post-rock kind of uh, thing, gently charming guitars, um, very spacey. Um, I really dig it. There was a while there where I was listening to it almost every day, which is not something uh, I usually do. And so I would say this record is um, worthy of all the hype that people are giving it. Uh, in fact, it's so good, it makes me wonder, you know, could they ever possibly top it? I mean, they've, so, they've set such a standard here with this record that I can't imagine what they could do after this that wouldn't be just a repeat of it or just that was good. Um, and uh, just to show that um, I listen to all kinds of stuff. And uh, I am not ashamed to say I like pop music. Um, and so I gotta show this. Yes, the new Daft Punk. Um, Big Star 1000 said something like, uh, yeah, why not just get a sheep right I had to chuckle. Um, but for me, coming from a certain age, and I really didn't know anything about Daft Punk before this, but you know, I heard some of these songs and it's like, this shit is catchy. And it has that sound of late 70s, early 80s dance music has it down pat. Um, I heard that they spent a million dollars making this record. And uh, you listen to this vinyl and it sounds like they spent a million dollars making this record. You know, it's cool. Uh, it's got a nice booklet. Uh, it's like real human beings are playing this music. And in fact, they, they name the entire you know orchestra plays every stringed instrument players named in this book. Um, so, 
don't know, to me, this music has been so out of fashion for so long that hearing Daft Punk do it in this way and have it, you know, resonate. It's just, it's just, it's, it's cool. It's fun. It's definitely a record of this, you know, a summertime record. I love listening to this in the car, you know, with the windows open. Um, playing it a lot. Probably play it till I can't stand it anymore. You know, but that's that's what you do with pop records, right? Um, you know, I like it so much. I even got the 12 inch single of "Get Lucky." You know, stupid song, but man, what a hook! You know? Incredible hook. Uh. All right, it's getting long here. I want to show one more kind of mainstream record that uh, actually I don't know what I think of this. Record. I wasn't really familiar. I was familiar with Caius, but Queens of the Stone Age. Um, I frankly couldn't. I just couldn't resist the sheer physicality of this thing. I mean, I don't know if you've seen this at the record store, but this jacket is huge and thick and heavy. Um, Preston Palace. It's got this great, it's got a poster, a sticker. Um, like clock. I'm sure you guys know about it. But this is, this is how, this is the beauty of vinyl. I mean, look at this. This is a, uh, a book that's you know, bound into this jacket. Um, with these drawings. And, you know, like I said, I don't know what I think of the music. It's, you know, it's okay. It's, uh, it's a rock record. Uh, but as an object, Preston Paulus, I mean, it's so big it won't even fit on, on one of my shelves. I, um, I love records. And I love you all. And I'm going to stop there. Uh, there's some more I was going to show, but 22 minutes is it's pretty long. Um, I will see you soon. Bless you.